Can we get real for a moment? Let's let's talk about the dating marketplace if you're over 40. There are way too many wounded men out there who are seeking companionship, connection, and sex without ever actually being able to fully commit. And this happens to men who are unsettled in their life, and they use women in this bizarre way. That's right, they use women in this bizarre way, and that's what I'm gonna lean into. And I'm just gonna give you the answer right from the get-go. How do they use women? They actually use them as their therapist. That's right, this is what's happening today for so many men who are unsettled in their life. And we're seeing this habitually in the dating marketplace. Now, let me explain what I mean by they're using you as their therapist. Okay, this usually happens for those of you that are connecting with men who live 30 to 60 minutes drive or further away, okay? This isn't usually the men who live close by who can physically see you rather quickly. In fact, if you're used, if you're familiar with my three types of men who are dating, there are the users, there are the spenders, and then there are the grower builders, okay? Now the users, those are the love bombers, those are the men who seek quick connection because they want physical connection with a woman. Usually all they want is sex. And by the way, there are female users as well. These are the gold diggers. These are the entitled women that use men. It's for short-term gain for their benefit, okay? Then there are the grower, the builders. These are men who are fully capable of ready to commit to someone, and they actually are that space before they have actually ever meet you. These aren't the men who say, I'm not ready for a relationship. These are the men who say, I want a relationship, and they seek those women who fit the type of relationship they're looking for. And then there are the spenders. These are, the, and the reason why I call them spenders, they will spend time with you. They want that companionship. They want that connection. They want that sex, but they're not capable to lean into a relationship. Okay, so a moment ago, I said, these are usually the men who live 30 minutes to one hour or further away. Why is that so critically important? is because when you actually begin to connect with these men, you will spend a lot of time either on the phone or you'll spend a lot of time texting these men. Sadly today, for those that, and the, the reason why the distance matter is if someone is, if someone is a grower or builder, they will want to meet a woman rather quickly. In other words, they're not looking to do the long distance relationship and they're not looking to use you as their therapist. The men who are the users, they want to meet you right away because they just want to get laid. It's the spender type of men that you have to be careful of. This represents roughly about 60% of the single male population out there. 20% of the users, 20% of the grower and builders. So roughly eight out of 10 men you meet are most likely going to waste your time and worse, use you in this way. Now, what I mean by therapist they will spend incessant, they will spend numerous amounts of hours talking to you about their problems, talking about their past relationship, talking about the, the things that are going on in their life, usually the problematic things going on in their life. Because what they're seeking from you is that female energy. They want that energy from a woman, that compassionate energy, that nurturing energy, that that energy that um that energy that is so, um, did I say compassionate? Compassionate, okay? Just like a therapist would be compassionate to a person. But this doesn't mean that they're capable of actually leaning into a relationship. Now, let me give you some examples. Well, okay, look, I'm your dating coach. My job is to help you vet for those emotionally available men. By the way, schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. That's my area of expertise because I'm here to put the odds in your favor to find those men who are the growers and the builders, okay? That's my job is help because the reality is is eight out of 10 men you meet are not, in, are not even capable of leaning into a relationship. My job is to help you attract those men who are. Okay, so that's what I do for a living. But what we're talking about today are the men who are incapable of this. And I know this because I was that guy. Now, first off, I was in the trenches with you, okay? So I, after turning 40 and going through a divorce, um, finding myself out there in the dating marketplace, I know what it's like to go through alimony, child support, visitation rights, 
family court, erectile dysfunction, uh, elderly parents in assisted living facilities, uh, women who are going through menopause. I've been in the trenches with you and I've been in the trenches when it comes to actually using these devices to connect with someone. In fact, I was in the trenches for, let's see, by the time I got, let's say I started a divorce, uh, got divorced in 2007, it began in 2005. Uh, let's see, it took me 15 years before I met my beloved right there. There's Marie and I, and she's the one who shoots video with me on occasion. You're thinking to yourself, 15 years? Well, right off the bat, I was a train wreck after my divorce. I was a train wreck. I lost my quarter million dollar a year job. I was in a state of depression. I was a mess, okay? Remember I said earlier, when a man is unsettled in his life, here's what most likely he'll do. And this is what I did. I spent hours upon hours upon hours on the phone with women, talking to them about relationships, right from the get-go, right when I got my first uh, dating profile. I didn't realize I was addicted to online dating, but also I was addicted to the female energy of women just listening to me. Because back then, for those of us who are baby boomers or Gen Xers, I'm tail end baby boomer, and a lot of my clients are Gen Xers and baby boomers, we didn't consider therapy back then. And certainly 15, 16 years ago, we weren't thinking about therapy as we might today. So my form of therapy was talking to women, having them listen to my problems. Now, sometimes they were giving me good advice, but in many cases, they were just being that nurturing person. And what happened, I didn't realize I was using them for this female energy. And in some cases, I was dating some of these women. And I pulled the bullshit like, you know, like, oh, I'm ready for a relationship. I'm ready for a relationship. And I get close to a woman. And I realized, oh, my God, the last thing I want is a relationship with a person. And I would pull away. I wouldn't ghost. I would do what's called the dysfunctional moonwalk. I would backpedal by sharing how dysfunctional my life is and then having the woman make the choice to say, this isn't working for me. Yeah, that's what I used to do for quite some time. And this went on, let me, I actually put together an interesting timeline. So then the 2009 market crash happened. And I, during that time, I'm still addicted to online dating, but I was in a massive state of depression and I actually had to move in with my mother and father in my forties. I had to move in with my mother and father. This was after living in a $2.2 million home. I had got wiped out and lost everything. Why am I sharing this with you? Because when I say I've been in the trenches, I've been in the bottom of the pit of despair. And what did I do during the bottom of the pit of despair? I, was, I wasn't intentionally doing this. I wasn't even consciously doing this. I didn't realize, and this happens to a lot of men, we're so attracted to that female energy, that compassionate, loving energy, that I was having conversation with conversation with conversation with women online and certainly dating some of them as well. And then 2000, um, uh, so then 2010 was women used to just ask me for dating advice, or at least the women I was communicating online, just to review their profile. And I didn't realize this was going to turn into my profession because little by little, I began to study human behavior. And then in 2011, I met a woman and we began a six year on and off journey, meaning we dated for six years on and off. Why am I sharing this with you? Because she was a therapist. She knew I lived with my mom and dad. She knew how messed up I was. She even said this to me. She goes, you're a great guy, Jonathan, but I know you're not ready for a relationship. And yet she spent close to six years on and off with me. What I didn't realize during that time is she was reparenting me, that she happened to be a therapist. So literally during the six year period we were together, I got, to re I got a chance to get reparented but she was also acting as my therapist. Now she's fully well aware of this. We had a very conscious uncoupling. She even knew during this process because she was doing her own reparenting at that time. Have you ever found yourself in a relationship with a man where you, you weren't the right, you weren't in a good space to be in a relationship with them, but you got the benefit of his masculine energy and you got to reparent yourself? Yeah, many people have found themselves in those kind of relationships, myself included. 
And by the way, we had a very amicable ending to our relationship and we still remain friendly to one another. Actually, we consider each other family. She was there for me when my mother passed away and she was certainly there for me when my son passed away. And while we don't talk on a regular basis, we're still friendly to one another. So this brings me to, this started in 2011 but in 2014, I also found my tribe, my spiritual tribe, my, my tribe of people that really resonated with me from a personal development self-help perspective. Why I'm sharing this with you is the journey started with the divorce uh, beginning in 2005, but I went literally to the depths of depression. And what was I doing that during that time? I was unintentionally, unconsciously using women. Now, many of you have experienced men exactly like this or some variation of this, where men use you as their therapist. And again, this is an unconscious, this isn't deliberate. This is an unconscious experience for a lot of men. Now, I went through this breakup with this person in 2017, and then I lost a child in 2018. Many of you know that I lost my son, Connor. There's a picture of him right there. And that broke my heart open. That broke open that egoic way I lived for so many years after high school and in my marriage. I was very self-centric during that time. And that certainly broke me open in ways I couldn't even imagine. It humbled me. Men need to have a humbling experience for them to actually break out of their ego and open into their heart. And allowed me to look back and connect the dots at how I unconsciously, unintentionally used women in this therapist capacity. And so many of you could be relating to this. Many of you go, oh my God, I've experienced the same thing. The guy, all he does is talk about his problems, his problems, problems. You're a great listener thinking you're actually connecting with him. When you're not really connecting with him, all you're doing is acting as his therapist. And so when my son passed away, it gave me a great opportunity to dive deep. And then that's when inspired, literally two months after he passed away, it inspired me to write my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Help, and Spiritual Work that's dedicated to him. Why I'm sharing this with you is during that time, I also... Actually, remember I shared with you in 2017, I ended my relationship. Well, my, my girlfriend at that time as a birthday present, after we broke up, gave me, uh, gifted me the Hoffman process, the Hoffman process. And by the way, this, wasn't an, this was an expensive gift. Doing it in person back then was $3,500. And if you're not familiar with the Hoffman process, I highly recommend Googling the Hoffman process. This allowed me to heal my childhood wounds and traumas and adult traumas so I could actually lean into the relationship I am now in, I'm in with now. And so in 2021, I connected with my beloved through a dating app called Match.com. She actually reached out to me. It was long distance. We didn't spend a lot of time talking to one another, but we connected and started to follow each other on social media. And then eventually a year later, we met in person. And then five years, months after that, we moved in together. Okay, why am I sharing all this with you? Why is this so critically important? I know what it's like to use women and then what I, the title of this in a bizarre way, but I don't want you to get fooled by the guys who are unsettled in their lives. You should be looking for those men who are what I call the grower and the builders. These are men who clearly know they want a significant relationship in their life, just like what I did with Marie. I was very crystal clear. I was reluctant to begin this journey with her because of the distance and through laying our cards on the table through radical honesty and finally what I call the rules of engagement, we were able to come to an agreement of how this would relationship would work. Ladies, I speak to so many of you who are passively in the dating process. You expect on some level men to know, expect men to know what they're doing. And I'm here to say most men are clueless. In fact, most guys are winging it. They're rather clueless in the process. This is why you have to be in charge of your relationship destiny, not the guy. You can't leave it up to the guy to know, listen, I'm not to suggest there aren't good men out there, but here's the bottom line. If you're going to get physically intimate with a man, then you have every right, right from the get-go, to establish your standards. 
And yet many of you, I got to tell you something. I speak to women. I mean, I get, I get coach requests for coaching calls every day. And I'm talking to women who all they do is lament about a guy. And I always ask you, why isn't it about you? Why is it you give your power away? Ladies, you have this habitual, it's a beautiful part of who you are, that you're loving and you're nurturing and you're agreeable. At the same time, you give your power away to men. You get fooled by guys, especially when they're not in a good place in their life, when they're unsettled. So it's important to you to gauge a man's emotional maturity. That's one of the things I teach in my private coaching is how to decipher his emotional maturity by literally asking some radically honest questions right from the get-go before you give your heart to someone to put the odds in your favor. This is why I got an email this morning, or not this morning, today is Thursday. I got an email on Monday from a client, sent me a picture of her and her boyfriend. They met um, eight months ago. She worked with me a year ago. They met eight months ago. And the reason why she sent me the picture is they're actually moving in together. She didn't take that long. When you, I, I, it's amazing. When women make an investment in this program, I'm always shocked at how quickly they literally turn their love life around. It's literally, they become a magnetic attractor when you stop is, accepting crumbs, when you stand in your power, when you stand in your, your sovereignty, your self-worth, your self-esteem, your self-confidence, your self-reliance. This makes all the difference in the world. So I don't want you to get fooled by the guys who use you as their therapist. Now, again, they're doing this unconsciously, but for many of you, it's music to your ears. And my hope is today is your wake up call to say, I won't accept this behavior anymore. Are you with me on this? If you are, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel right in the chat box. I will not accept crumbs anymore. I won't get fooled by guys who are using me as a, your, their therapist. Are you with me? Give me an amen if you are.